This is a 63-year-old man who is a smoker and has a familiar history of lung cancer. He has a 1.7 centimeter, I know you already know what it is, <laughs> but it's a 1.7 centimeter nodule uh, in left lower lobe and the FNA cannot roll out, roll out malignancy. So this is the node. And it is a very, very well, so it is a very well, the, the very well, what do you say? Demarcated. Demarc demarcated, I wanted to, the demarcated nodule, and it's made of, should I describe or do you, are you ready? No, I think that's good. The description yeah. is good because okay. residents, you know, residents, fellows will be Definitely. watching, maybe even medical students. So it's a well demarcated nodule that is made of some cartilage and it has some respiratory epithelia yeah. in the middle. It has no fat tissue, but it could have. And it has also fibromyxoid stroma. And next to it, you can see these fibroblastic plaques. Interesting. This was biopsied, right, uh, Irene, before? It is uh, with a uh, cytology. Oh, OK. So they put it's a needle. Fine needle, fine needle aspiration. Very it said, it, it said they see some atyp atypia, but they could not roll out malignancy. Yeah. So let me, uh, you know, just uh, can I give do a little side note here? Just because yeah, of go that. For it. So there is a side note. If you look um, in uh, American Journal of Search Path, we did many years ago a paper on this. Uh, Thing with with Erica as the first author, so Doc Stader et al. will be the paper, and uh, with Dr. Katzenstein, I think it was the idea was from Dr. Jeff Myers, who noticed that after you do needle biopsies of mm. anything, especially lung, you get a little um, biopsy site change mm. that looks very much like organizing pneumonia. So you you know the thing you notice as fibroblast plugs, it looks exactly like that, except it's uh, like a straight, like a needle. It, hmm. because it follows the contour of the needle and yeah. often it entraps lung epithelium inside it. And there's little, there's occasionally a little giant cell or little hemocytin laden macrophages and stuff like that. So that needle, actually this one is odd because it shapes faces up, but sometimes it faces towards the lesion, you know, you can see it pointing towards the lesion. And that's like a well-described biopsy site change in the lung. Uh, so my feeling is this is probably that because it would be odd to just have organizing pneumonia next to a hematoma, it, it could be, it could be that too. But my feeling is this is probably a needle biopsy site change. Just I thought it, it was because of obstruction, but, but what you are saying is. Yeah. And, and maybe they actually missed the, the, the lesion actually wasn't actually sampled, right? So it looks like it's going off to the side, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I think the needle must have hit the cartilage part and then it has yeah. changed the direction because it could not go through it. Uh, that's why it's gone in different directions. You can see all the different directions. You can expect to see some needles in different directions. Maybe that's why it was non-diagnostic. So, Irene, do you know why it was non-diagnostic? What was it called? Uh, the uh, atypia. It's, they said atypia? descriptive yeah. and said we see some reactive atypia. We cannot uh, completely rule out malignancy. Yeah. And there was no cartilage in the biopsy? Yeah, so interesting, right? I mean, after the, that, after that, maybe which, they biopsy the uh, reactive lung next to the lesion, right? Yeah. That, well, that's yeah. Or, or some of that untrapped um, epithelium that can get a little bit reactive looking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, we, we like to see this biopsy site changes always in the, the breast. Correct. Um, because biopsy site changes of previous core biopsy, it's like a must be able to mention in the uh, resection specimens. Uh, so it's interesting to see that uh, Sanjay and uh, Erika had published this before. I've seen the paper, uh, but how often, my follow-up question is, how often do you notice this? Do you really, do you look for it in every lung resection after a FNA or it's just like bystander? It, you know, typically what happens is exactly like Irene described, you know? I look at a thing, I say, oh, organizing pneumonia. Then I go, oh, no, 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 wait. It's shaped like that, yeah. and, you know, yeah. it's pointing in one direction. There's a little giant cell in it. There's a little hemocytin, and then I think, oh, that's what it is. It's a, it's a coordinate. Then I check to see the history. You know, then I see there's a 
needle biopsy a few days before or a couple of weeks back. That's how it happened. I don't yeah. look for it. I don't even mention it more, most of the time. Great. Maybe we didn't cut the the lesion, lesion just like to see the 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 trajectory you said. Maybe if we cut the lung in another trajectory, we see the perfect. Maybe yeah. yeah. And the, pa the patient has these smokers, macrophages, as we said, he was a smoker, and that's why some. This is a, a being a smoker is a, a suspicious, a thing that makes more suspicious lesions that could not be that suspicious. Mm -hmm. So I, I think we all get it right. <laughs> yes. Yes, we all got it right. Yeah, that's a great first case. Yeah. So, Irene, can I ask you to, um, if you can, oh, did you take it down? No. Um, to show if it get just show the epithelium within the lesion because I think yeah. that can be uh, kind of a pitfall, you know. Of course, in this case, everybody would see the cartilage because it's so obvious. But there's so much epithelium within this lesion, you know, that it, if in the past some people actually said the epithelial infoldings are part of the hematoma, but I don't, I don't know. You can you can think of it that way, but I don't think of the epithelium as part of the neoplasm. I think of the epithelium as just entrapped lung epithelium. Like, what do you guys think? Is it part of the hematoma or is it entrapped in the hematoma? I think it's entrapped because I, means I don't know. My first impression reading this stuff uh, in medical school, I always read it as entrapped, and that th that uh, word has stuck to me. And also, it's it's like the cartilage expanding along with the other connective tissue elements. Uh, so it's almost like um, expanding in between whatever the normal lung structures are and trying to um, entrap some of them. So I still feel that epithelium is uh, entrapped. I agree. I, I agree, but I think it's hard to prove either way. Yeah. Hard to prove, yeah. It's, it's, it's weird, prove. no? Because it, it we don't see bronchial epithelium doing this, this kind of structure. Yeah. It's not... It's not, uh, not, not normal structures. It would be uh, entrapped, but some kind of metaplasia also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yes. It's much more yes. than just normal bronchial epithelium. So it's, florid, yeah. It's, it's kind of like a fiber epithelial lesion in the breast or something like that, yes, right? Yes. Where you have the stromal and the epithelium. Yeah, very much like a philodes, actually, or a yeah. fibroadenoma. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly right. Great case. I mean, it, it's such a um, good good diagnosis to know you know for especially for residents everybody is it doesn't it happen in your institutions that uh, everybody's so happy when there is an amartoma yeah. the surgeon yeah. suspects it or knows knows it when he they send the resident can diagnose it you can also from the macro even and everybody's so happy oh it's an amartoma oh it's an amartoma yes. oh, okay okay <laughs> and the patient must be happy too right to, to learn that they have a benign thing it's amazing yeah. That's and also good. the core biopsy, uh, let me add one more thing on the core biopsy, the differential diagnosis for cartilage and some atypical uh, pneumocytes on core biopsy can be difficult because you are just going from a most benign thing like hematoma to the most malignant, which can be well differentiated like extraskeletal mixoid uh, chondrosarcoma kind of uh, lesion. So you are just running from one end of the spectrum to another end of the spectrum and giving all kinds of differential diagnosis. And also I remember reading chondromas, just benign cartilage forming mass lesions in the lung. You have to look for carnies something, carnies triad or something. Yeah. So yeah. it's always important to keep those things in mind. Yes, let me ask you one question because I know, you know, anybody who has trained at Mayo always hears about the carney syndrome. Let me ask you one like uh, practical question, okay? How many of you have diagnosed a chondroma or a Carney syndrome of, uh, of after that? Raise your hand. How many of you have diagnosed a hematoma? Okay. <laughs> so one thing is reality and the other thing is, uh, you know, theory. So I, I don't doubt that it can happen, but, uh, you know, there's, yeah, there's one thing is a horse. The other thing is a zebra. <laughs> That's where I leave it. <laughs> 